the plan hasn't changed. Uh, the consumers haven't changed, really. It's prohibition. Hi, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV, and today we're talking with Mark Thornton. He's an economics professor at Auburn University. He's also the author of Economics of Prohibition and a senior fellow at the Mises Institute. Mark, thanks for talking to us. It's great to be with you. So recent studies have shown that the potency of marijuana has increased a lot with THC levels rising from only half a percent in the 1970s to 25 percent today. So do you think these are correct allegations, and uh, why do you think they've come about? Marijuana of the 1970s contained all the leaves and the seeds and everything, so it was a mismeasurement. And today, when you get, look at the samples that are 25% potent, they're basically just the flower of the plant, and there's no stems or seeds and things you don't need. And so there is a measurement error in that, but there's no doubt that the potency of marijuana that gets onto the streets of America today is much higher, and it continues to get even higher. And there's been speculation about this, ranging from theories of market failure to supply-side economics, and you say it's just because of prohibition. That's correct. It's prohibition that's driving this marketplace. Consumers don't necessarily need or seek out these higher potency products. They're more expensive, for one thing. But prohibition drives suppliers, the people who grow it, the people who transport it, the people who sell it, to make it more compact. And as a result, it's more potent uh, when it reaches the street. So the plan hasn't changed. Uh, the consumers haven't changed, really. It's prohibition and the ever difficulties and risks of getting it from the growing stage to the consumer. Are people who are saying there's 25% levels of THC, are they just using this as a scare tactic? Yes, it's very much uh, a scare tactic issue. Uh, the 25% shows up in only a few samples of marijuana which were created and produced for medical marijuana dispensaries for certain types of medical problems. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing we want. By targeting the, the way that marijuana is grown and the types of strains that are used, uh, the marketplace is going to produce targeted products that are going to help specific people and uh, without necessarily making them tremendously high and unable to work. Could you make any parallels between this and alcohol prohibition? Oh, sure. The same thing happened during alcohol prohibition. You know, Americans were beer drinkers uh, back in the 1920s, and whiskey was a minor part of the uh, alcohol market, and beer was the dominant player in the alcohol market. During prohibition, 90 cents of every dollar was spent on whiskey. Poor quality, high potency whiskey, so there's no doubt uh, and if you look at uh, an Auburn football game, typically what you'll find is tailgaters, 100,000 tailgaters, and most of them are drinking beer. But once they go into the stadium, what kind of alcohol do they drink? They bring in a flask of whiskey because it's prohibited. It's a phenomenon that exists anytime government tries to prevent the consumption of something. And bring that to other illegal drugs. I mean, have, have potency levels of heroin or cocaine gone up? Well, you know, the, the potency of marijuana rising isn't really a tremendous problem because it's not a lethal drug. You don't overdose on it. But the same thing applies to cocaine, heroin, and all these other drugs. The dealers in those markets also want to concentrate their product as much as possible. And so as a result, at least in the, at the distribution level, heroin, cocaine, crystal meth are very highly potent products. And, and then every time the government puts the squeeze on the market, suppliers look for even more dangerous drugs. If I'm being optimistic, we're entering an era of legalization. Do you think the market will correct itself and return to less potent levels? Well, I think that under an era of legalized marijuana, what you'll find is uh, a more mild marijuana product that is not highly concentrated. I think the consumers and consumer choice will ultimately bring about a variety of products, uh, products that are not extremely highly potent, and products for which the customer knows more about the potency and the chemical composition of what they're consuming. So the market will bring about more information, more safety, more choice. Do you think that's enough or do you think you know, the FDA might still get involved? I hope not. The FDA, whenever they put their hands on something, ultimately it's bad for the American consumer, drugs, food. The FDA seal of approval creates moral hazards. It says this drug is okay, so doctors prescribe it too often, consumers 
uh, consume it too often, and so the FDA needs to say, uh, stay hands off of this issue. Well, Mark, thank you so much for talking to us. Well, you certainly hit all the high points. No pun intended. For Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.